I'm sitting on the cutting room floor of the Anarchy Roundtable, putting the finishing touches on episode 5 of the show, and I thought this show could use a little introduction before I get it out to you. We've got Rich Paul on the show today, and I'm very excited about that. Um, but before we get to that, I just want to say there's going to be a couple of um, awkward cuts to the show. Um, and the reason for that is um, James and Jeff decided to go up to... Rory, Rory Becker! Becker. <laughs> Rory Becker! The spot, unofficial sponsor of tonight's episode. Where James purchased a half-gallon growler of beer that was rated for about 17% alcohol by volume. And he and Rich proceeded to drink the entire growler in the earlier part of the show. And between that and having six people on the show, things got a little chaotic at times. Yeah, so... Yeah! So we and Rich wow! real! Yeah. <laughs> but I do want to say, we got some excellent content for you. Rich is going to talk about a story of civil disobedience that was successful in New Hampshire. And every time the show does get a little chaotic, just when you might be getting a little frustrated with that, Mike is going to pull the show back together and get us back on track. So with that, here is episode five of the Anarchy Roundtable. Best part James of will tell you about his chaos theory, which is anarchy, which is good. Okay. All right, Joe, you're in your toast, team. Let's toast. Is it recording? Yeah, 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 let's recording. Are we recording on both of them? Anarchy Roundtable episode five. five. Really? And five? Yeah, that so many of them? We are going to toast to, to black freedom. To freedom. 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 To freedom. Freedom of black people. Freedom. <laughs> That is good. I'm gonna have to sip this. That's the yeah. smallest bourbon there is. What kind of bourbon was that? Woodford Reserve. Oh, so, yeah. Joe, what's your name? It has a nice flavor to it. Joe, you know, it's interesting you brought that up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. But we'll, actually, we'll get this in a minute. I'm Joe. I'm Jeff. I'm Dan. James. Mike. Rich. And welcome to episode five of the Anarchy. Is it really episode five? It's episode five of the Anarchy. Ovoid table. Ovoid table. Round table. It's still round. It's still round. It's got rounded edges. Yeah, it's still round. There's six of us here, obviously. We had to make the table a little less round than usual. A little more ovoid. I object. (laughs) I'm pretty sure this is a round wrecked table. So, what are we starting so, with, Joe? Yeah. So, we, we've got Rich. Round wreck is the function you'd use to generate this. I think, I think we should start with Rich, because you, you flew in all the way from New Hampshire. I to, did, uh, too. To come to this this glorious place on, on the planet. Yeah. But luckily, since I was in town, I was able to make a side trip <laughs> and visit my parents. Who were, yeah. Uh, coincidentally, not an hour away. Excellent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh. We got to meet Rich's dad. Mm. It was awesome. Yeah, Rich and, does have uh, a dad. It is I, true. I smuggled, it is conf- it is. I smuggled weed into his dad's house. It, oh, it is Jesus. confirmed that Rich is not a pod person. <laughs> it's it's true. It's true. I had parents. I, I had parents. I did not hatch from an egg. Um. <laughs> so, Rich, why don't you tell us a little bit about what you've done for Anarchy? Um... Well, let's see. I I uh I guess the first thing I did for Anarchy was I moved to the Free State Project or I moved to New Hampshire 
uh, for the Free State Project. I'm originally from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and uh, I moved uh, in 2009. Uh, I was a minarchist when I moved, and uh, they say that the, the difference between a minarchist and an anarchist is six months in New Hampshire. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I held out for about uh, maybe a little longer than that. But anyway, I started a rally in Keene, New Hampshire that was getting uh, literally during the two years that it ran, uh, it was a a civil disobedience rally that took place every day. We smoked out, in, uh, weather permitting, we smoked out in the square publicly. Uh, for the few, first few weeks, they sent the uh, police out, and there were arrests. I was arrested three times, and eventually they realized that we weren't going to go away and that the only way they could take take away our newspaper coverage was to stop sending the police at all. So that is so great. <laughs> so brave. Yeah. Well, it, it was it wow. really oh the God. risk was not that high for that hijink. I did a total of twelve days in jail, maybe no twenty four days in jail, wow. Some, something like that. Nothing, Don't get but the <laughs> maybe it was forty days. But anyway, the but for doing that 40 days, I established a demilitarized zone in the war on drugs that persisted for like three years. Wow. And Is it still you persisting know, now? Well, let's put it this way. We don't go out there every day anymore, but when we do go out there, we never get a hassle. And we do go out still and party in the Keene Town Square. And in the height of it, we were out there, we started a nightcap to go along with the 420 rally, which was, of course, at 420 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, and we, uh, and literally, we would be out there at 11 o'clock at night, drinking beer out of the can, no bag, toasting the police as they drive by, and they're not stopping to discuss the situation. You know, we're openly smoking weed out there, and that left an impression on on this town where there's a lot of people, literally thousands of people at this rally ended up doing civil disobedience. Mm -hmm. so this is like one of the things, uh, you know, I used to earn 100000 a year, but this I'm proud of. Uh, it, it uh, you know, I, I, made, I made no money on it. I lost shitloads of money on it, but it, uh, you know, it actually allowed me to know what freedom feels like. You no, know? that's nice. And that's that, the thing. that yeah, to yeah. me is the great thing about, uh, you know, it, whether it's in New Hampshire or, or, or elsewhere, like the Porcupine uh, Freedom Festival in New Hampshire and the uh, Jackalope Freedom Festival, uh, wherever it is, if you've never been to a Freedom Festival, go. Those you know, things. we host yeah. our own we here host in Michigan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, I want to get to yours. When does that happen? August. 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 August this year. Okay. Looks like it's going to be the last weekend of August this year. Really? Yeah. 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 We already yeah. paid for the It was the beginning of everything. Yeah. August 5th was this year. It was early August this year. It's yeah, going to be late August this year because they didn't have the availability. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. Well, that's going to appear with Scott. No. Was Scott's thing in... September? Yeah. September. Okay. September, yeah. He always says it's September. Yeah, we discussed it, and it was the best we could come up with. Yeah. We wanted to keep the it was the better. only weekend the only. in August they yeah. had. So. so the Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest last weekend in August 2016. Come. Okay. Yeah. Be there or be square. <laughs> Anarchy and politics. What the hell is this I saw on your timeline about stand with Rand? I kind of... Okay. It makes me off. a little concerned. How <laughs> 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 can... I, I don't know. No uh, disrespect intended. Well, maybe a little, but how can you call yourself an anarchist and support <laughs> Rand? Okay. Well, it's Not really easy. Rand. It's really easy. What's an anarchist? An anarchist is a, is a person who believes that in the best of all possible worlds, there would be no government. I absolutely believe that without a government we could achieve a much better society than any other possible society. I have, there's no doubt about that in my mind. But we're not there yet, okay? So I work on a lot of different levels, 
Okay. One is let's try and make right now as le- as the least bad that we can possibly make it while we're in the process of educating more of our neighbors as to why the uh, why anarchy is a good thing. Okay. So and thing people like the ACLU. Okay, we may not agree with them on everything, but I but they may well show up and one day and support our right to have a protest, support our right under the Constitution. Because remember, yeah, the Constitution is an imperfect document, but it does have a First Amendment, which means that when we go out and protest and they arrest us for it, at least sometimes we get off. So it's better to have the Constitution than to not have the Constitution if we're going to have a state. Okay? But The other thing is public relations. Rand Paul is a gateway drug to libertarianism. He's not a libertarian. He doesn't claim to be a libertarian. But he is the gateway drug to libertarianism because once you get that far, you have to look back and see what his father had to say. And Ron Paul made more anarchists Running as a minarchist, although I'm pretty sure he is a minarchist, he ran as a minarchist. He sounded like a minarchist, um, and uh, yet he ran, and he made more anarchists than any other person that I can think of in history, with the possible exception of Murray Rothbard. Um, so okay, there, ran was so, pretty big there, and that you uh-huh. got to be careful with that assessment. I mean, are we are we, are we including and I would argue the ANCAPs versus the actual, the historically left uh, ANCOMs and anarchists. Mm -hmm. I'm one of those. Well, anyway, I'm an anarchist to, oh, I'm sorry. I was going to counter one of your points, though, with the, where you're saying about making the state more tolerable. There are, I've, I've heard this strategy amongst anarchists, but there's also, you have multiple strategies, and I understand that one, but you also have that if you make the state tolerable, mm-hmm. it's harder to spread the message of the state needs to go. Mm-hmm. So if you get these right people in the office, if you get Rand Paul in the office, which not that he has a chance now of getting into office. Oh, he's he, not going to get into he office. Has, he, has, so he has a, you know. If I, if I would, if I thought he had a chance of being he, elected, he has, uh, he I has, might well not support him. Yeah. If you can support the reality someone hopeless, why I not support, support re- someone like Daryl Perry? Well, well I, I don't support Gary, Daryl Perry because Gary Johnson is a better candidate and because John McAfee, is a, McAfee is a better yes. candidate. What do you mean by better Mary candidate? Mary Ruhrt is a better candidate. Mary Ruhrt said she is a good run. candidate. Well, well, people guy. say a lot of things. I I think there Gary are... Gary right. Johnson is okay, said he's Daryl Perry doesn't have the charisma to be president. So I'm sorry. Let's not, he doesn't even have the charisma to be the candidate that makes the most noise. And, and what I love about Rand Paul is that he gets on national TV in front of rarely. a lot more... Rarely, but more frequently than anybody else I can think but of. If you the have other John thing McCaffrey. is his candidacy keeps Ron Paul relevant so that news networks keep inviting Ron Paul on and hoping he'll say something stupid, I don't which think he never does. It's hey, about if you, let's John not McCaffrey, let's if not, you have a John right, McAfee, let's not talk already, about already once you have do- John McAfee announced, what's the very mm-hmm. first thing you had when John McAfee announced he's seeking the Libertarian nomination? A big-ass piece in USA Today. All right. About John McAfee and Libertarian. John McAfee is a better yeah, candidate. Right, John right, McAfee right. is a better candidate. Right, he's a better right. candidate, oh, but he's yeah, not in the right Guys, 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 listen. We're not <laughs> talking about candidates. Which fucking candidate is better? Because, in my opinion, and probably a couple other people yeah, here. John McAfee's Listen, listen. Well, we're not going to talk about which candidate is better. That, that's we're we're besides talking about the before. philosophy of supporting a candidate. Period. The no, guy who ran the guy breaking the rules of anarchy. <laughs> we don't I, know guy, the I was, making, I was actually. Bet, how do I get off? I will I bet you a point. dollar you without were, even you know, knowing his name. You were making. A I will I bet you a track. dollar. Uh, will any of you motherfuckers take this bet? Whoever it was who ran against Hitler wasn't worse. 
I think it's very likely that whoever the fuck ran against Hitler wasn't worse than Hitler was. I don't okay? know. Okay? So if I, I Hitler, could have Hitler, supported the guy who ran against but Hitler, Hitler wasn't Democratic no matter, elected. No, he was Yes, he was. He no, won. He, no, he, he stormed it. He stormed it. Yeah. Well, you know, well, yeah, yeah, yeah everybody cheats in elections. That's how it works. But yet, I'm not going to... Th- I mean, you, there's... Well, that, Malcolm X was right when he said that you have two choices. The ballot box and the cartridge box. A, my parents are still alive and I love them and I don't want to die right now. You love your parents. Okay? And the second thing is that we would not win. Okay? Right mm-hmm. We absolutely would about right now. We would win. totally win. He's talking about right now. Well, right, right now we would win. Nobody is out of your mind. We would win. There aren't enough Even if of somebody us. won, there are. it wouldn't be us. <laughs> Even if there somebody won, it would be colossal. How many revolutionaries do you think there are in America? Not just people who call themselves revolutionaries, but who actually have the fucking grombas to go out and get shot in the For face. One, for their lack if of a you country. have a revolution, um, <laughs> for one, you have a, if you have a revolution, okay, you're going to have, of the current military system they have, okay, you're going to have quite a few of those fuckers fracture off and say, no, we're not turning our guns on Americans. Not yet. And you have seen this by the amount of support Ron Paul got. Mm-hmm. Do you think all those Ron Paul supporting troops... The troops supported Ron Paul more than any candidate ever. You're right. Do you think all these You're people right. that said, okay. we want Ron Paul, mm-hmm. would then go and fucking a number of years later turn their guns against American citizens? No, the fuck they would not. Yeah. You would have all those people fracture off. Immediately, if that happened, because they would not do it. Only in our they estimation would not do it. of how many of those people there are, I don't think they, they there were, are he, Ron Paul was yet. the number one supported candidate amongst the troops. The anarchist movement is growing. It's not just in the anarchist movement. The anarchist it's movement. It's not just the anarchist. No, it's not just it's the, the anarchist. It's the broad libertarian music on, as a as a and, branch, and not just not just libertarian. I mean. The, the biggest thing to me is I want to see a secessionist movement. And you also have a number country. of the troops that are of other things that aren't going to do this, that aren't right. going to do this. You the, have a ton of troops that aren't yeah. going to do this. You're not going to be fighting against the full military force. Okay. Okay, well, in a revolution, you're, you're, you're right going to have giant splinters. You're going to have most of those fuckers come. And I used to work... I, used to I don't shouldn't. say I most of them. I probably shouldn't even talk about this. I probably shouldn't even... I used to work, I used to work with a guy who was in his reserve. What percentage of the troops, having come home from Iraq, have talked about what they saw over there and atrocities that they saw over there. Not enough. I'm not saying that there aren't any of the people that but you're talking about. But when it comes about, to turning their guns exist. on Americans. Okay. When it comes to that, a the lot Amer- of them will be more hesitant to shoot white people. Exactly. That doesn't they're, they're necessarily they're fine with them. them to me, but there are they're gonna such They're going to be people. hesitant to shoot white um, people, okay? There, there's a lot of Ron Paul supporters. They're not going to be so Eager to shoot white people. I mean, the only reason why the United States went after Hitler is because Hitler was coming after their shooting brown people game, and the the America loves shooting brown people. I understand this, but when it comes to shooting, when it comes to shooting, that's okay. I'm I'm not expected to understand the following line. Go ahead. When when it comes to shooting Americans, you're not going to have all these people going to be saying. So you're going to have probably even upwards of half of the people splinter off. All right, American citizens. I don't citizens, think it's going to be half. Even if I it's a quarter, now, maybe that's we irrelevant. Get 15%. Even if it's fifteen no, percent, the numbers are irrelevant. Even that, if it, it's the, not, the, I don't the think amount, the God amount, can the be amount, damned. The amount God can fight on the side of whatever, yeah, right, right, whatever the amount, the the amount side of God. he wants. Right, 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 but the time. invisible you God have, favors <laughs> large armies. When you right, have, when right, you have, you have a militia fighting on their home turf. They always have the advantage. Well, this only, would be good for another discussion. Only if they have support of a sufficient <laughs> I, number of their neighbors. And it took not 3% there yet. to beat the British in the Revolutionary War. All right. Uh-huh. It took we'll 3%. We'll talk about this a different time. But, Let's talk about politics. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I personally don't think... 
we're right for revolution now. I absolutely don't support any kind of revolutionary violence or anything at this point. We're not the Such hippies of the revolutionary yeah. era. We're the beatniks of the revolutionary right. era. But if we play our cards right, we can inspire a generation a generation after us well, to that's... revolt. But we're not the generation to do that unless the only chance for any kind of a revolt would be if the Democratic and the Republican parties decided to divorce each other, okay, and just split the union and, and let the red states be red states and let the blue states be blue states, in which case we might be able to turn New Hampshire into a libertarian state. But you already have. You look at the numbers. I don't think there's You look at the numbers in the them. polling data. You have a ton of Americans running for this. Whether they're libertarian or not, you have, what is it, like 30-some odd well, percent the believe that the government is destructive to the rights of individuals. Mm-hmm. That's what we need. We have that. We have those numbers. We have the numbers for a revolution. What we don't have is the fucking cojones for revolution. Okay. A re- we have the numbers. All right. We do don't you, have the fucking Do you balls. agree with me that the anarchist movement is growing? Yeah. Oh, it's definitely do you, growing. Do you... Okay, there, there's I'm not two talking about an anarchist that revolution. Right, well, keep in mind what happened after the after the revolution in Russia when the when the anarchists and the uh, and the socialists worked exactly. together. The socialists turned around and they killed all the fucking anarchists. I'm not down for that. That was okay? the fault of and the, the anarchists working with them. Thing, the same fucking thing that, that was happened. because the they made exactly. cause with the conservatives to a too great a, an extent in the hey, revolution. there we go. We Why are you supporting Ron Paul? Right. We just said right. this. this right. Why are you supporting Ron Paul? No, wait, we're, wait, we're, I got it. Wait, no, 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 I got what I was looking for. Now, why wait, are you supporting, why are you supporting Rand Paul if you just yourself admitting <laughs> that if we support the conservatives, we will end up dead? Okay, here's, here's my answer. <laughs> Rand Paul will never be president of the United States. Rand Paul won't even be the Republican nominee this year. Because he doesn't have the charisma. But yet. No, he, no. He's no but, Trump. <laughs> but, okay. Look, I'm a computer programmer. He doesn't have the Trump card. I'm a, I'm a computer Wild programmer, Trump. okay? I game everything. Okay? If I see a system, I figure out how it works, and I game it. And the reality is that I am supporting Rand Paul for the Republican nomination. There is, show me somebody who is better, who's running for the Republican nomination, and I will support him. But there is no such person. So, who do you support so, for the Democratic nomination? No, for the Democratic nomination, no, let's, I let's support Bernie there. Sanders. God, okay, no, no, wait. no, no, let's, no, let's no, not wait. go there. <laughs> so, no, 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 the the rules <laughs> no, and the reason is because he has more charisma than, than <laughs> Vermin Supreme, uh, no. <laughs> and therefore he will do more damage to the Democratic Party establishment than any other candidate so, for the, de- I have for a the Democratic nomination. So what you're saying is you support Rand Paul because he will do more to educate and bring more people to to he's the a philosophy of anarchy. He's a catalyst than anybody else. But he's the very exactly. conservative that you were saying. So, if we aligned ourselves with, but we'd he's end up not going to get the power to okay. use the to use the state against That's us exact, because he's not big enough either. It's well, the exact it. same mistake that was made by the anarchists in Russia. Who ended up dead? No, but that's something you worry about in the end game when the revolution actually comes, Rich. which is that's where it becomes relevant because that's when they have the guns and the ability to kill us. Until they actually get control of the government, they don't have the power to kill us, and therefore their allies not threats. So no, it's would, only but... between the point where we've established ninety <laughs> eliminated ninety percent of government and the point where we've eliminated 100% of government that minarchists become our enemies. No. It's all a matter of time. Go ahead, no. bro. Uh, I'm sorry. I, I seems, hope I'm not running my mouth too much. It seems but. like you're really advocating or what you're hoping for 
is basically Ron Paul Part 2. Yes. That's it. That's what you really want out of Rand. Even though yes. Rand's arguments have largely, like his foreign policy and all that, are well, atrocious. Keep yeah. in mind that Ron Paul, okay, I'm a, like I say, I'm a computer programmer. I look at things algorithmically. Ron Paul already sucked the low-hanging fruit out of the Republican Party, okay? What we need now, and, and turn them into anarchists mostly, or party libertarians, or, uh, you know, in some cases... You can be both. Yes, you can be both, and I <laughs> am <laughs> both. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an anarchist because that's what I believe would be the best possible world. I'm a motley anarchist because I'm willing to allow places where I don't live to have whatever form of government or no form of government that they want, so long as they're willing to allow to let me be. So basically, unless somebody from another place attacks me, I don't care if they're they can be fascists, they can be totalitarians in the world, so I, can I, be, I, I, there can be theocrats so in the world, I don't care, let them be, so long as I can go to one place and try anarchy. Because you gotta think, Marx was pretty damn irresponsible when he said, hey, you should take my untested ideas and put them in charge of the whole fucking world by force, through bloody revolution, without knowing for sure if they'll work, because you've never tested them. The reality is that I'm, I don't put code into production until it's been tested. I don't want to see worldwide anarchy until I've seen anarchy in a very small area and seen it work. Well, what do you think of Freetown Christiana, or uh, what's that country that's arose? It's next to Turkey or some shit. Um, Liberland. No, uh, no, there's another one. There's another one. And I applied for citizenship, um, and I never got it. I mean, what I think that Rand Paul would do if he actually got elected by some miracle, which is different from the other candidates, is that I think that he would tend to be sympathetic to Tenth Amendment arguments. And the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution... I, the Tenth Amendment is one of my least favorite amendments, though. The Tenth Amendment it's says... It's a horrible amendment. That, well, this the is why it's important to me. The Ninth Amendment is badass. You, 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 you got to understand, <laughs> I've got a unique perspective. What does it say? This is why it's important to me. The Tenth Amendment says that all powers that are not granted to the federal government in the Constitution are reserved to the states or to the people. Okay, so basically Native anything rights. that the feds are not required to do by the Constitution, they are Certainly. required not to do. And if those things are to be done, they're to be done either by That's the states the or followed, by the people. Probably one of the least followed exactly. yeah, amendments. It's now, the, the, reason, the reason that that's important to me is personally is I'm a Free State Project member, okay? Uh, we want, we believe that there are not enough anarchists in America to turn America anarchists. There are not enough libertarians in America to turn America libertarian. But there are enough anarchists in, or there are enough libertarians in America to turn New Hampshire libertarian. And that interfaces with Rand Paul because I want the president who is most likely when the state of New Hampshire legalizes marijuana or prostitution or gambling to say, hey, the Tenth Amendment says that that's a state well, matter. There's that, nothing that, telling the but, feds to do me, this, and therefore point, I'm right? not going to interfere. Well, you yeah, make a point. Uh, Daryl Perry no, is better than Rand Paul, then. Okay. Daryl well, Perry anyway, is better than Rand Paul, Paul but Daryl Perry is not in the no, Republican no, race. Let me make a point. Let me Rich. make one point. No, that, no, that, no, no, that no, is my whole me. point about politics. No, my whole point about politics is precisely what you said. That Rand Paul will serve your interests. And that yes. is the evilness of the state, is because everyone uses the state to further their interests. Okay. And that is why the state is so fucking evil, because everyone is using the state to get 
government welfare to for the corporations right. for this to, to to control each other. I would like to eliminate the state, but, but here, that's I not have, an I option have, right if, now. If that's not the option. And you're looking for someone who will you respect do have that option. But you have the on. option of supporting a candidate who wants to get rid Jeff. of the state, and instead you're supporting a candidate who wants to maintain the state. But Jeff, okay, hold on. Hold if on. Rand wait, wait. Paul dropped out of the Republican nomination of of the Republican race tomorrow, you know who I would be supporting for uh, John McCain. No, you already I said would be Gary supporting Johnson Bernie or Sanders. John McAfee or Bernie no, no, Sanders. No, 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 no. That's that what... race hasn't even started yet. That race hasn't started yet. Of course, right. I'm going to support them in the general election. But if Rand Paul were not in the Republican primary, there would be no candidate in the Republican primary who would advance my interests. And so my next choice would be to support Bernie Sanders in the Democratic That's, that's my question candidate. right there. And the reason is because if Bernie Sanders actually did the two things that he will, he claims he would do, which are dismantle the police state Bullshit. and... He's not going to no do way. it. I don't think Wait, he's going to do it either, but I think he would do a lot of damage to the Democratic Party. Uh, because I don't think the, the powers that be want, want right, right, Bernie right, right. Sanders any more than I think they want Ron Paul, but for different reasons. But the other thing is, if he dismantled the police state and established socialism at the same time, Dirty you know high. what we would do? We would have a lot Anarchy. fewer people to shoot in the face before we could overthrow the government. So that's, and we would have a lot more people wanting to overthrow the government with us. Why because not support they'd be a candidate out. who wants wait to get minute. rid of the wait, government? Wait a minute, wait a minute. I do. Why, 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 not, why if Rand Paul has less of a chance of doing anything. Mm -hmm. Then there, there, there are of the gambling in Europe where they allow gambling and they actually make the odds on the elections. Uh huh. Right. Where what? That's what's going to happen. That's how the ads are going to happen. Let me give you some more beer. Thanks. I need more beer too. It's like drugs. So we we have, uh, <laughs> we have we uh, have. Where's your growler? What? Outside. So if we right if we have. This one? If you look at the uh, the odds of what's going to happen in the presidential election uh -huh. with the gamble, because that's where the odds really are. Hillary Clinton's going to win. We already know. The odds are already in Hillary Clinton's favor. No, it's Hillary or Jeff. You know, she, no, care. it's not even no, Jeff. It's Jeff, Jeff, Jeff is nothing. He's really Probably. Good. Now, if you look at the odds, well, who's, gonna, who's looking at winning it? Hillary? Jason. All right. The, the the odds of the gambling are showing that she has a one. It's a one point six for the odds. That means you bet a dollar on Hillary, you only make fucking sixty cents. She's gonna fucking win it. All right. But you look at who who's the next person that Trump. you're talking about? No, Rubio. Who is Rubio's coming Fuck next? Rubio. Rubio. It's gonna be Rubio versus Hillary. No. It's already decided. That's the odds. All right. See, but if you if you look at who who maybe is the the if you look at know, if you know. look down the list and you look down the list, all depends on Iowa. So Bernie Hampshire. Sanders has a nine. All right. Wait a second. Where Marco Rubio? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Off here for a minute. Marco Rubio has a five, but Bernie Sanders has a nine. You off here for a minute. But if you look at any independent candidate. It's a fifty-one. Okay, let's. But you look wait, at Mike's Rand gonna Paul. Cut me off. I'm it's gonna a one hundred and fifty-one. All right, stop. Okay. Any independent candidate, James. it doesn't matter who they are, James, come is on. a better Kill chance it. of influence okay. in the election. Stop. This is not Are compelling radio. Okay, <laughs> listen. Oh, <laughs> listen. Oh, listen. Oh, listen. Oh, Joe. Joe. Are we compelling Joe, wait, people? Could we, <laughs> could you remain, compel nobody? Could you, I'm a fucking anarchist. Could you remind these three, I don't know, anarchists? We're two. No, no, no there's Jeff's trying to. Could you remind them the name of this? Round table. table. Here. I'm, round table. Hey, I have there's round rack. We're not, round we're not the rack. libertarian not, there's political a, there's there's square, square toast in the middle of the circle. That's a round rack. There we go. That's hey, the only hey, function. We're supposed to make a toast shit. to these people. You know, I just remember. Yeah, who are these people? Oh, wait, with who are, with are these people? Rules? Rules? They are with our ruler. Um, and and McCoy. And read this. Oh, I spilled my beer. <laughs> Damn it, Hannah hey, McCoy, you made me spill my beer. beer. My mom says, Damn it, Hannah no. McCoy. Hannah Rich. McCoy is only one of the reps, uh, the actual person who. It's all Hannah McCoy. Rich. Rich. <laughs> and, okay, and, I and this is what I have to say to you. Okay. Yeah, read that. Read that. <laughs> it, it's, 
Read it. Okay. Say it. What did I just say? Read it out loud. Fuck your candidate. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, this is... Okay. This is done by Dane Wallen. One of the things... Facebook page. One of the... Support him. He's got a Facebook page. He's got a Facebook page. Holy shit, this motherfucker's got a Facebook page. Hold up. (laughs) For his company. Hold on a minute. Okay. Quit touching my beard. For what office? Let me do... Hey, it's without rules. man. Let me do... Without rules. Let me do... They got t-shirts and they got shirts. They got fucking Facebook The motherfuckers here. Now we gotta all interrupt for each other. What it's office? fucking chaos, motherfucker! <laughs> for what office do I support Rand Paul? Rich, can I ask None. you a question? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> you got told okay. President. I or not, you said you don't think he's gonna win. Neither. Wrong. For what office do I support the uh the GOP Rand nomination Paul? for POTUS? Geo, yeah. Bingo. Will there you, you go. will I you support, support me for the Libertarian nomination for Eighth District Congress? Uh I think that either McAfee or Gary for Johnson Congress. would be a more credible candidate for U.S. And Congress more, in oh, Michigan's Eighth District. Absolutely, yes. unless but unless will you heard it here first? A better everybody. candidate. But will you support <laughs> me for Livingston County Sheriff? Absolutely. Boom. Whoa! Woo! It's got Absolutely. Rich Paul's endorsement live on the show. It's right. true. What? The <laughs> Rich Paul. Um, <laughs> Jeff, I mean, Jeff Woods, right. Congress, and uh, James yes. Woods. Yeah. Woo! The sheriff Woo! and Congress free all prisoners and arrest all cops. <laughs> but if you show me a better candidate for the same office, I'll drop you like a hot potato. Um, <laughs> I'm the only anarchist in the race. I'm the only you know what James would say? If you can it. find a better candidate, vote, vote for him. For him. <laughs> well, no, I tell you, don't vote at all. Don't vote at all, but if you're going to vote, no, you can find see, a better candidate. That's, that's silly. <laughs> the, the thing you should refrain from if you're an anarchist is not voting, it's paying taxes. Taxes. Exactly. Paying taxes is the number one sin. I couldn't agree more. Vote. Take money from the state if you can get money from the state because they have stolen and, your freedom, and elect your me life, sheriff, your liberty, so I can things of cops. infinite value from you, and they owe I you. I said that I'd All care. right. But yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. James, we disagree with that. James, I don't disagree. Wait a minute. I do. <laughs> Danny, <laughs> see, I can't what do you do think of these I'm too damn proud, crazy but. fuckers talking about politics? Yeah, I mean, we need to get an alternative. I don't. Here. I, you know, they brought. Hey, I'm trying listen to, to this though. You I'm know what? To talk about listen this. to you for the last twenty five no, 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 no. minutes. I gotta tell yeah, you, you I gotta tell you mouth, something, bro. I gotta tell you something. Me if you, too, if you're but you're trying, if you're trying me, to, so I get to respond. I gotta beat on these guys for a minute. Okay. If you're if you're gonna if you're looking at how to achieve a libertarian yeah. society, yeah, this is our common. All right. Topic. Now this is an important problem. Is that if you try and limit your means to achieving that society to only direct action? Did you say means? Means. 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 Like means. 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 Yeah. He said means. Our means. Our means. <laughs> if you're My limiting means your means, we'll dude, you limited. gotta have dank ass memes. <laughs> but no, you gotta have that. You and gotta, you gotta, have, you dank gotta ass have dank ass, ass memes. To <laughs> dank, dank ass memes. Dank ass memes. Dank motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> if you're limited, was I not supposed to get drunk? <laughs> no, this is the whole point of this. Show. Okay, girl, <laughs> you're supposed to be good beer, bro. It is, isn't it? Yeah, paid for with it, bitcoins. Yeah. Paid, paid for, with, for bitcoins. with bitcoins. I'm gonna do a shout out, even though they're not endorsing it. To Brewery Becker. Brewery Becker. Okay. Brewery, Brewery Becker. Becker. You drunken motherfuckers at home, be sure to check out the revolutionary <laughs> agorist <laughs> cadre. These because motherfuckers I do in Bright, Michigan, commercials. they, they um, have a brew pub that accepts Bitcoin. Probably, I think, the only brew pub in the Jesus nation Christ, you that accepts Bitcoin. <laughs> All right, but yeah, back to the if you, if you we just got started. We they gave me you know, you fed me alcohol. You, I thought I was supposed to be drunk. Oh, we're yeah. supposed to be drunk. Well, okay, you go. Are you sure we can't smoke weed in here yeah. on camera? That would make it so much cooler. Sure. We can slip out that would have been really cool. Fan. Okay, let's smoke a doobie, bro. All right, let's you, go. If we're going to take a quick commercial break. 
for uh, the purpose of some. This commercial that. break is brought to you by Brewery Becker in Brayton, Michigan. <laughs> we did come back from the break and record some more material for you guys, but I'm going to go ahead and make the decision in post production to cut the show off right here. But before I let you go, I just want to share with you a clip of the kind of material that we are able to record after the break. And what what is happening in this clip is I'm trying to get a little bit of silence on our recording for some post-production uh, technical needs. And this is me attempting to record three seconds of people not talking or making any noise. All right, 10 seconds of this silence. This is a fun starting, podcast. When he's starting, when Danny sits down. Actually, when I started, start 10 seconds start. of silence. All right, here we, here we go. Don't sit down. That's, oh, you sat down. Oh, fuck you. Fuck Balls. Balls. <laughs> no balls. Put balls. We need no talking for like five or 10 seconds. Put okay. Up. What balls. are we doing? Put your hands up. <laughs> or laughing. <laughs> there will be no fun here. Stop that having fun. For five, Damn you just give me five fun. seconds. Five seconds. You're of a skills audio manipulator. Manipulate it. I can give you five seconds guys, of shakes. Guys, guys, come on. Seriously, come on. Five silence. seconds of silence. <clears throat> Without the dog in the fucking thing. <laughs> the <laughs> tell her what to do. <laughs> It's an anarcho dog. Why are we so drunk? Come on, come on. All five out. What we're trying to do is establish what silence is for the audience. What the right. fuck? Why? <laughs> Wait, laughing. Five seconds. Five seconds. Come on. I'm sorry. I mean, what the fuck is quiet with a great <laughs> comment? <laughs> that was legitimately <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, let's be quiet. It's okay, the absence of change is it. what it is. We need it for five seconds, please. Five it's been ten minutes. I've been trying to get five seconds. Yeah, <laughs> so. okay, stop that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> This is not compelling. Wait, give me three seconds of silence. silence. Can we get three fucking this seconds? Is why of I don't drink alcohol? <laughs> three three seconds. Why are you drunk? She hasn't drunk? <laughs> yes, been drinking tea. No, I got whiskey right here. Look at it. Drink she drank shit. like one drop of whiskey. <laughs> okay, no more talking. All right. Okay, stop that. Whoa. <laughs> you tricked me. <laughs> This is compelling radio. <laughs> Getting drunk is the best radio. <laughs> Especially if you're the one who's getting drunk. It's true. Think how many drunk people there are out there just itching for less than eight people. Break it! Break it! Get drunk. We're trying okay. to make a show. Seriously. This is serious. Just right. three He's seconds. Recording. No, three seconds. <laughs> is recording? We're recording. We need three seconds of silence. Okay. We're, so we're not so doing God damn it. Why <laughs> the yeah. fuck do you talk, Jeff? <laughs> uh, look at my phone. For oh, my God.